Hi, we're going to talk about manufacturing technology in this lesson. And manufacturing technology has, has grown substantially over time. You know, there was a time that people used drills like this to, uh, to drill a hole. Put the, put the drill in there and use this. A lot of manual work. But technology has changed. Now, now we have drills that not only are cordless, run off of a battery, but they're drill drivers. So they really can, can do a job. Technology, when we look at it, manufacturing technology hasn't changed just in large factories. It's changed in home workshops, just like this one here. The tools are different. It makes it a whole lot easier to do things. The other thing that's changed in manufacturing technology is we got computers. And computers allow the manufacturing of goods to be so much easier. Uh, RFIDs, radio frequency identification, those little tags that you find on, on things that you buy at Walmart or some of the grocery stores, or those little stickers that are inside your CDs or DVDs, those are RFID coatings, and they can track inventory using them. They've even got them here in Hutchinson in our, our recycling cans. So when we put that big brown bin, recycling bin, out by the curb, whenever they pick it up to dump it, they're able to weigh it, pick up the RFID, and then we get credit for how much stuff we're recycling. Now, one time, the United States had an agricultural economy. We moved into an industrial economy. Now we're into a service economy. No longer are we the production capital of the world. At one time, Detroit, Michigan was really the manufacturing capital. I grew up in Michigan outside of, actually I was born in Detroit. That's why one of my daughters got me this shirt. Born or made in Detroit. That's where I was made, that's where I was born. And as I grew up, you know, when we went to school, we knew that a lot of people in our class were going to go right to General Motors or Ford or Chrysler and get a job. The economy was good. And education in that area really was focused on turning out people who would be able to become engineers or factory workers. And believe me, factory workers got paid very well. But that's all changed. The economy has shifted. And manufacturing technology is no longer centered in Detroit, Michigan. It's not really even centered in Michigan itself anymore. But let's take a look at what is the process for building something. You know, there's an over-the-wall over design process that had been used for several years. And, and this is a process where the marketing people would say, here's something we need to make. They'd toss it over the wall to the research people. They'd research it. They'd toss it over to the wall, the design people. The design people would come up with the design. They'd toss it over to the wall to the manufacturing people, and then they'd toss it over to the wall to the sales people. And the sales people never talked to the manufacturing people or the design people. And oftentimes, when sales people were out in the field, they would be meeting with, with customers who would say, well, you know, if you could just design this a little bit differently, we really could use more of it but they never had that kind of a discussion. Now, when you're looking at designing things, there is traditionally, the traditional method has been what's called the waterfall method. The waterfall method starts off with requirements for a product. And then it goes to design people, and then it's implemented. It's like a waterfall as it flows down. Now, interestingly enough, Apple, Steve Jobs, and Microsoft had two different approaches to how things were made. I was at a conference several years ago, and, and the, uh, one of the speakers talked about a meeting that he had both with Apple and with Microsoft. And when he met with the people in Microsoft, he met with their design team and their, 
uh, their manufacturing team and uh, after all the pleasantries uh, they said well the design team can leave and he did a presentation to the uh, the engineering staff who were going to come up with the manufacturing process on the other hand when he had his meeting at Apple when it came time for someone to leave Steve Jobs said all of you engineers you take off I want the design team here and we see that today in the difference between products that are made by Apple and products by Microsoft when you look at the iPhone or the iPad they have a slick design it's the design team that said this is what we want you guys find a way to build it so that it fits so once once it's designed then it goes on to the implementation and then it goes on to verification and and then it goes on into the maintenance stage for the uh, for the process now there's several different ways that things can be made and designed and the textbook covers uh, a lot of them but I want to talk about some more focused first let's take a look at the supply chain management supply chain management is where where or a product is planned and then there's a source for it it's made it's delivered and then there's returns so in other words you have a plan you have suppliers you have that the manufacturer you have the logistics and you have defects interestingly enough when Ford Henry Ford started Ford Motor Car Company he used the supply chain management all of the the parts that he needed were right there and that was one of the advantages of growing up in Michigan is what every other year our school would take a trip down and we to Ford and we would see where they were rolling out steel and turning it into ingots they had, we didn't get into the into the uh, uh, the, uh, the where they were actually making the steel but we saw them take these large ingots and roll them into steel there was a glass company right there where they made glass for the windows all of that was supply chain management it was it was a cumulative effort of all those things and and that RFID uh, information on parts is very important for this you know at one time believe it or not if you wanted to buy a car you went to the car dealer and you said I want this model I want this color I want two doors or four doors you could even say did you want a visor over the passenger side and I remember my parents going down and ordering cars and that car was made for them and it would show up in three weeks. Now if you want to buy a car you go out to the car dealership and they say take a look what's on the lot. So rather than, than them supplying what people want, you got to take what they have. And in supply chain management you're really only concerned for what happens in your plant. The people in the glass factory just didn't care what happened in the foundry and the people in the foundry didn't care what happened to the people who are rolling out steel or the people over in the assembly line. You're just worried about your own. Now, lean manufacturing is a very interesting way of making things. It's a horizontal stream of manufacturing and you only have in your area those tools that you need. Everything's in its place and it's kept clean. It's standardized work. If you're working with putting screws into some tool, the only thing you'd have in your area is a screwdriver or maybe a drill with a screwdriver attachment. But you wouldn't have hammers and all the other things because in lean manufacturing you want to make everything as simple as you possibly can. It's standardized. Everything is the same. And that's why when you go to buy a car today, a lot of manufacturers are using lean manufacturing because they will roll off cars off the assembly line that the only difference is paint. The rest of it's pretty much all the same. It's a consistent flow of work. Now lean manufacturing stands in contrast to agile manufacturing. Agile manufacturing is like lean manufacturing with one very important difference. And that is in agile manufacturing there's flexibility in production. There are customized products where you find in lean you have high volume in a low mix in agile you have very low volume and high mix this t-shirt for example more than likely was made using agile manufacturing process they would make a few of them this way and then they would put make another t-shirt that may say 
the Jayhawks, or my favorite, Michigan State. It's, it's a customized product. You're not stuck with the same thing all the time. So Agile and Lean are pretty much the same, except you can customize it in Agile. It's still Lean, but it's customizable. Now, when we look at uh, the manufacturing processes, just-in-time manufacturing is another one that's, that's very important. In just-in-time, you're making only what is needed, when it's needed, and in the amount needed. And, and uh, Tachi Ono, who was a vice president for Toyota, came over to this country and was working in this country, and he went to the Piggly Wiggly grocery store. And at the Piggly Wiggly, he discovered that they had very low inventory in the back. When somebody bought something, it was scanned, and it was automatically then placed on an order sheet. And every night, those order sheets flew out, flowed, flowed out to their warehouse. The warehouse was not in the store. And that order was filled, and the next day, a truck showed up with the goods. Just-in-time manufacturing is that way. Production is pulled through. It's not pushed through. It eliminates inventories. When I, when I was in, uh, back in Michigan, I worked a short time at General Motors Institute, which is now Kettering University. And at GMI, when we take students out into the plant, I was amazed at these enormous rolls of steel that were just waiting to be used on a punch press. Not anymore. Just in time manufacturing, when that last roll of steel is picked up and taken to the, to the machine it needs to go to, there's another one that's ordered and on its way. So they don't have this large, enormous warehousing. Now, because you don't have a lot of warehousing, you have to make sure that the stock you're using is used accurately. So TQM, Total Quality Management, is very important in this process. Because with TQM, you're able to keep the airs low. The production is kept high and, and the imperfections are kept low. Now, concurrent engineering design is, is where processes are done in parallel. We talked about over the wall or, or the waterfall. What this is is parallel. All stakeholders, all stakeholders are part of the design team. Problems are identified sooner, and it's a shorter time to market. Everybody's involved, from the design team to the manufacturing team to the sales staff. Everybody sits down and decides concurrently how this product is going to get to market. That way you'll you avoid a lot of problems that may occur down the line. Now when we look at manufacturing today there's a lot of computer integrated manufacturing. This is where everything is automated. There's no warehousing of products and they have few employees. With computer animated manufacturing you don't have people on forklifts bringing those rolls of steel to the machines where they're needed. What happens is there are, that's put on a robotic cart and it follows a magnetic strip in the floor and it flows to the workstation. Once it's done there, the robots take them off, the robotic arms take them off, put them back on a cart, and then it moves to the next station. It is very efficient. Also, it does not require a lot of employees. Where my high school graduating class probably had 75, 80% of the people going into the auto industry, either working in the plant or working as an engineer, what we have with, with this type of, of uh, process, those jobs aren't there anymore. So as you, as you read the book and you go through uh, this lesson, Keep in mind that there is a lot of wonderful things that have come along, like drills, that make it easy not only for individuals in their shops at home, but also for factories. But all of those have a price to pay. And that price is you don't need as many people working in the factories. That's why manufacturing has changed in this country and around the world. That leads to some problems, but it also solves some problems. So until our next lesson, I wish you a good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon.